guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to prep clay fossils. Now these fossils they require a special type of preparation and time is really your enemy in this scenario. But I will just mention when you come across a clay fossil or one in a really soft matrix the importance is how what you do when you find it. So you've really got to wrap it in something straight away either kitchen roll or toilet paper, newspaper pretty much anything to just protect it and then get it out of the sunlight because your issue with clay fossils is they're constantly drying as soon as they're exposed and that's what actually destroys the fossil so that drying process if you haven't put some paraloid on the fossil or protected it it's just going to break apart and crumble away so they're very fragile and they're very key like there's um, very key steps that you have to follow in order to preserve them but then once they're preserved they can be beautiful and last for forever basically so let's get to it i'm going to flip you guys over so you can see the specimens i'm going to be prepping with you guys today and um, then we'll start the process so these specimens in particular i found yesterday so they're really recent finds and you'll see in a minute that if I don't prep them, they'll look like this. So this one didn't survive traveling back with me and it just crumbled away into a million pieces. And that's a jigsaw that's a slightly too complicated for me. But then others you can see here that are still, you know, hidden by the clay matrix. We'll prep those using um, like a craft knife that looks like this. So you can get these on Amazon or in hobby shops along with dental tools. So you're just looking for really kind of um, thin points or sharp kind of edges that can just do very detailed work because the matrix is so soft, you can literally cut it like cake. So it's really easy to prep, but also really easy to damage. So if we look at this piece here, you can literally see the drying cracks. So when I found this piece, it wouldn't have had any cracks in it. And then within a few hours, these have formed. So they need really imminent prep but they are really lovely pieces. So these ones here are crushed ammonites, not all of them, but some of them. And then I've also got some smaller little ammonites here that came from within the clays. Now these ones are a bit stronger. So this is one I prepped earlier to show you guys. So you can see once prepped, it's got a lovely color to it. And I'll probably still put a layer of paraloid on this one anyway, just to help preserve the shell a little bit more but they, they just need kind of, these ones need a soak in hot water, whereas these ones need, you know, a bit of detail work and then some paraloid. Now the paraloid I recommend is B72, and it's kind of like these plastic nuggets and then you melt them in acetone. So I'll link that all down below so you guys can check it out. But first thing I'm gonna do is put these ones in some warm water. So I'll just pour it in. And you can see instantly mud coming off. So I'm just going to submerge these and let them soak for probably about 20 minutes. And that will completely soften any mud that's in the center or in the whirls. And then they should come out like this, just different color variations. So these are quite easy to prep. And then with these ones, I'm gonna prop my camera up and show you how you can use the sharp knives or a point to just carefully prep these very, very delicate fossils. So here's an example of one of the ones I found. So this is in need of just a little bit of prep to help reveal the rest of the ammonite. So this type of mud should lift off very easily. You can see it just flakes away and it's very soft with just the use of, you know, either a sharp nail could work or I got this off Amazon, it's a dental tool, so they're really good as well. You're just looking for something stronger than the mud. And it should just break away like this. Just be very careful because the shells are extremely delicate. So this one looks like it's actually slightly deformed, so there isn't a center there. It looks like one of the whorls is kind of crushed into the center. Let's have a look. So you can see how soft the matrix is. My craft knife here or standing knife just slices through it like it's literally like it's cake. So you can also use this to shape the specimen. So if you don't like the piece of rock it's in, you can actually carve, you know, a perfect square around it if you wanted to. So I think this piece isn't complete. So I'm just gonna finish it up and then see what we're dealing with. So this is 
what it looks like after a bit of prep and as you can see this is a deformed specimen so there is, there is no center to this ammonite unfortunately but to preserve the shell of this piece I'm now going to put a thin layer of paraloid on top so I've just prepared the paraloid prior which does take about 12 hours to dissolve um, in the acetone so just bear that in mind if you are planning on going fossil hunting where the specimens are this delicate and then all I'm going to do is using a paintbrush, just paint a very thin layer over the top of just the fossil. So there's no need to coat the entire specimen, just where the shell is, because that's the most delicate part and that's what needs protecting. Just like that. And then you let it dry and that piece is then protected from further harm. So here's another specimen I found, which is a really lovely example of the ammonite. And it is unfortunately in a few pieces. So I'm going to use the paraloid as a glue to put it back on its rock and then also to coat the other side of it. So I'm just going to remove those two pieces and just paint on the rock here. Like so. And then just place these back where they were. And just line them up as best you can like that. and then just let it dry and then I'm going to paint another layer just on the fossil like that. This is the next specimen I'm going to prep. Now I'm not going to actually try and reveal any more of this ammonite just because I can see so many cracks already formed I think it won't survive that process so I'm just going to put a thin layer of paraloid on the shell and then hope it doesn't break any further when the matrix dries fully. So I'm just going to lay it there and then just nice thin layer Just like that. So that's what it looks like now with a nice layer of paraloid on. I'm just going to put paraloid on all the rest of the specimens and then I'll move on to the smaller like 3D ammonites I found that are currently soaking in the hot water. So I'm just going to put a nice thin coat on the shell here. how they came out so these all have a nice layer of paraloid on them just to help protect them but I also find the paraloid just also helps bring the shell out so you can see they look really lovely with that little bit of shine on them but it just also happens to help preserve them so they're all all really lovely specimens just like that and they're all different shapes and sizes so this one here is actually half crushed and half um, 3D, uncrushed, <laughs> forgot the word there. So you can see it's got a bit of both. And then this one is lovely because you've got the two halves. So this is actually the other side of it. So this is the imprint. And then that is the shell. So it's kind of like a little book. And then there's this teeny little one here. Just like that. So these are the ones that survived. So then we also have this pile here which unfortunately just has has seen better days for sure but that does happen with clay fossils and then this one here is quite cool I don't know if you guys will be able to see but it almost looks like it's a um, shrimp fossil of some sort there we go it's going to focus for you guys so you can see it's something crushed in the rock here so, I, so this looks like some sort of shrimp leg maybe down here 
so you guys can see. It's definitely something squashed in the rock there, but I just thought it was unusual, so I thought I would share. And then this one also came out beautifully. So this is the one that was in a few pieces, but has come out beautiful with just, this one I had to put a few layers of Paraloid on just to make sure it was secure. But overall, isn't that just a lovely piece? I'm surprised this one survived the trip back to be honest, so very happy with that one. So now we're going to move on to the ones that I've been soaking. So you can see just how much mud has come off of these. Like this is loaded with mud, like the whole base of this is just mud. <laughs> Same with this one as well, it's quite impressive what has actually come off these. So I thought they weren't actually that dirty, but I was definitely mistaken. So this is what they look like after a good soak. So isn't that beautiful so that's literally like a larger version of that one so they might need a tiny bit of work with like a little nail just to get out the centers but apart from that they're pretty much done so i'm going to take all of these out now and then i'll show you the finished result and voila this is what the finished result is so these are the two larger ammonites i found um, they're still very small but in comparison to the others these were the biggest ones and they've come out a beautiful kind of brownie bronze colour. Now these are pyrotized, so they have a really lovely preservation and this one, the colour is just beautiful. It's almost got like a burgundy in it. Really, really lovely. And then the others are here, so I haven't quite finished taking the mud off these ones, but once I finish taking the mud off just with my dental tools, I'll put a coat of Paraloid on those, but you guys get the idea and these are just teeny tiny and I am losing light, so I thought I would conclude here, but I think it's been quite a successful prep day. Just in case you were curious, these ones here are some finds from previous days. I was just putting another coat of Paraloid on them just to help give them a bit of shine. So this is one of my favourite ammonites. It just needed a little bit of help to bring the colours out. So there you can see it. The suture lines are just beautiful. So this is a lovely Harposphorus ammonite that I found. And then the others are just shells. For instance, these ones are lovely Gryphea specimens. So these were all found along the Jurassic Coast as well, but these are just from other locations. I love Gryphea, and for those of you who don't know, these are nicknamed the Devil's Toenails. I think you can figure out why. <laughs> so they just look kind of funny. So yeah, that's today's Fossil Friday. That's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Let me know down below if you have any questions about prepping clay ammonites or just clay fossils in general. The key to their preservation is definitely time and exposure to sunlight. Just try and keep those things to a minimum and you should have some lovely specimens. But um, I'm quite chuffed with how many successes I had today. Normally with clay fossils, unfortunately, there's quite a few casualties because they are just so fragile. Um, but keep in mind that if you, you know, get that paraloid on them quickly, they do have a good chance of becoming lovely examples of prehistoric life. But I do hope you're all doing well. Like and subscribe for more. I'll link my social media down below if you'd like to follow me on there along with links to the paraloid and tools I used in case you want to stock up in preparation for your future discoveries. But thank you again for watching and hopefully I'll see you next week.